lives about 2,200 years later. Studies which were to lead to our modern concept of electricity. From there on, the study progressed rapidly. Great names, Ohm, Joule, Curlung, Ben Franklin, Volta, Faraday, and Alexander Graham Bell, Edison, experimented with this new source of energy and became household names of their and later times. From these great pioneers and hundreds of thousands of unknowns came the great power we know today as electricity. To those of the 20th century, electricity is no great miracle. We take it for granted in almost everything we do. Batteries to start our cars and keep them running. Light to break through the shadows. And if necessary, turn night into day. The everyday conveniences without which most modern women would be at a loss. The telephone to span the miles and minutes from home to home. And of course, entertainment. The motion picture. The radio serving not only as an entertainment medium, but as a useful communications vehicle as well. And two, television, sometimes described as the electronic monster, but still one with which we spend a great percentage of our leisure time. And what has all this meant in terms of jobs? Today, we can turn in every direction and see the results of electricity. Great dams supplying power to generate electricity. And every industry has its own specialized uses. And every day, scientists and engineers are finding new uses. Without this power, there would be millions of fewer jobs today. Of course, to work with such a source, there must be education. And what is needed? A high school education? No. This is not enough. A college degree? Yes, that is, if you are to be a design engineer. But what about the majority who falls somewhere in between? Yes, there are jobs for this group too, perhaps more jobs than those of a design engineer. For these are the men and women who take the design engineer's ideas, his drawing board concepts, and put them to practical use. But where does the additional training come from then? There's a type of school to fit this need, too. These are the technical institutes, hundreds of them scattered across the country. They're good schools, fully licensed, accredited, and incorporated. They teach the skills needed by those unable or without the desire to complete a college course. Take it from those who should know. This is the course needed by so many. The Philadelphia Wireless Technical Institute in Philadelphia should know this is the oldest radio school in the United States. This school was founded in 1908, before most of us were born, before the majority ever dreamed of the future uses of electricity in radio. 20 years before the first primitive home radio sets were to make such an impact. During this time, the school served a valuable purpose by training shipboard operators, the men who kept the ships at sea in touch with the rest of the world. In good times, and in times of distress. The beginning of the school was 40 years before commercial television was to become the entertainment star of the era. Yet it was less than 20 years after the founding of the school that a television course was added to its curricula. Here, pioneers of the industry, not inventors, but educators such as J.C. Van Horn, saw the green grass of the future for the industry and for the coming generation. And they did something about it. And here at the Technical Institute, all that is needed is the equivalent of a high school education, an aptitude for the course, and a desire to study and to learn. Here, as in any school, the student starts at the beginning. This is where the fundamentals are learned, the basic concepts of electricity, and the related subjects such as math, physics, and drafting. The tools of the trade, so to speak, are acquired. These are not easy courses, not by a long shot, nor is this an easy school. Students come here to learn and must work hard at it. But there is fun, too, and relief from the lecture room comes in the lab. In these modern, well-equipped rooms, the theory is demonstrated and put to use. In the basic lab, students see Ohm's laws at work. See how important circuit design is in meeting the problems of power supply, resistance capacitance, 
tube functions. And this is only the start. In the radio receiver lab, there comes more power supply work, audio amplifiers, alignment of receivers, troubleshooting on receivers, and the use of all the test equipment. Now a new dimension is added to sound, sight. No longer are you concerned just with radio and audio, but with video as well. Experiments are performed to demonstrate the much more complex television circuits and the trouble a television technician or repairman must cope with. An advanced phase of the television lab takes up and carries on this work to points not covered in earlier lab work. And still there's more to come. The transmitter lab is the summit for radio work. Here is where the broadcast industry really starts. This is the ultimate in the use and understanding of such complex mechanisms as amplifiers and modulators of circuits never before dreamed of. For those who might be counting on going into industrial work, there's a lab for them too. This is the industrial electronics lab where servo mechanisms, control circuits, and transducers are keen. Included in the industrial electronics part of the course is the relatively new and therefore rapidly expanding field of computers. This is one of the newest and most fascinating of the developments in the electronics field. We all know the fantastic performance of these so-called brass brains. They can play games and at the same time solve complicated mathematical computations in minutes that would take the average man even months to finish, perhaps not even in a lifetime. And now in our vast-flung radar and military installations, they provide data, information about a possible enemy attack almost instantaneously. The brains of the alert system, providing the information from the radar eyes and ears to the mighty arms of the defense giant, the ballistic missiles. And here the advanced student learns the basic principles of all the digital and analog computers. Have you ever seen or wanted to see a big radio television control room? Ever wanted to know just what all those knobs, dials, and switches are for? What happens when one is twisted, pushed, or pulled? That's just another of the phases of training given at schools such as the Philadelphia Wireless Technical Institute. Certainly the equipment won't be as elaborate as those of the big networks or even of the large independent stations. But that's where you're headed, and this is where you learn. In general, the equipment is just only in the big operations, there's more of it. So in the broadcast studio and control room is learned the handling of the myriad of dials, switches, and knobs. You learn placement of microphones, uses of filters for special effects, how to conduct programs, integrate all the parts that make a program complete. And here, if you get an operator's license before you finish school, and many students do, you'll have the thrill of actually sending a program out to the general public over the school's own FM radio station, WPWT. The station, operating some 20 hours a week, does both recorded and live shows to give the students the greatest variety and experience. This would complete the work for those in the practical radio engineering school. But it by no means exhausts the courses for those who desire even more knowledge and even more experience. An additional four-month course takes the serious student and to still another mystery of the electronic world and on to other fields which has such a great need for technicians. The field, for instance, of radar. This is a concentrated course of both theoretical and practical nature which embraces all of the fields of radar. Again, in lecture rooms and in lab practice, the student is guided first through the basic concepts of radar theory and that of transmission lines down the passageways of ultra-high frequency oscillators and complete UHF radar, and then into the mystic terms of klystron and magnetron oscillators, and to the more familiar sounds and uses of microwave, radar, and Loran, the long-range navigation equipment. Graduates of this course should be able to qualify them to perform duties as radar maintenance and radar operator on marine or aircraft radar and thousands of other jobs in various industries. And what does all this training lead to? What does it lead to? To those technician jobs we spoke of before. Graduates of Philadelphia Wireless leave with the necessary knowledge to take an examination for a commercial radio operator's license. From that point on, the horizons are unlimited. The future, your own to make.
graduates can qualify as transmitter engineers or studio engineers in radio and television broadcasting, as ship or airline radio operators, engineering aides and laboratory technicians. Perhaps others will find new fields to enter as technical representatives or salesmen. For those who dream of someday being their own boss, there's a field of radio and television repair work, much of which can even be done right in your own home for a start. As for the fun and hobby side of it, most of the graduates will probably take to being ham radio operators, have the thrill of contacting other hams the world over, perhaps of even being of assistance to persons in trouble, as many Philadelphia area hams have recently done, or of being an important and vital link in the chain of our own civil defense setup. As a matter of fact, as an extracurricular activity, students are encouraged to join the school's amateur radio club and operate the school's amateur ham radio station, W3PW. These are only then a few of the many rewards and the many fields directly concerned with the men or women who has a high and good technical background. Virtually every technical field is short of technicians. These jobs must be filled if the practical applications are to keep up with the design engineer's ideas. And these jobs will be filled and the future secured by those who see their opportunities in these many diversified fields. And the necessary background knowledge will be there for those who want to learn. Thanks to the farsightedness, training skill, and background of the officials and teachers of such schools as the Philadelphia Wireless Technical Institute, the Technical Schools of America.